Good evening and welcome to Empire Stadium Wembley for the final of the Daily Mirror International Tournament. Tonight we meet and greet the two deadliest, oldest rivals in World Speedway. England, the host nation, leading the parade there and their rivals this evening, Sweden. The Swedes, the Viking invaders from Scandinavia, at home here at Wembley, more so than probably any track in the world, including their home tracks in Stockholm, Gothenburg and Malmö. These teams have come through six tough qualifying matches against the crack sides in the world. They've come through a very, very tough semi-final on Wednesday, and here they are, the young English Lions squad, the host nation, slightly the favourites tonight. The English Lions coming here now, very, a very young side, a formulating side, a nervous side, on parade at Wembley. Many big night debutants in this side. English Speedway regrouping, regathering its resources, and really they have the crowd behind them this evening, and they're going to need them because the Swedes are absolute dynamite at Wembley. The last time they were here as a team was in 1971 in the World Team Cup, which they won. And so now we meet the teams. First of all, the Swedes. At number one from the Pool Pirates, the young blonde bombshell, Krista Loftus, fourth in the world final here in September. Number two, a late inclusion in the Swedish side, replacing the injured Bent Janssen we have from the Oxford Rebels, Hasse Holmquist. Number three, the crown prince of Swedish Speedway, one of the really outstanding riders in the world today, Anders Michenek from the Reading Racers in Gettengarner in Stockholm. Number four, the most experienced, one of the most experienced youngsters, young riders in the uh, Swedish side, Soren Jostin from Bellevue, Manchester. Number five, Bent Pearson from Cradley Heath in Sweden. We saw him finish second in the world final here last September. Number six with the Viking war beard, the veteran of the squad, the skipper of the squad, Oli Nygren, who first started riding over here in 1950. And next to him, the youngest member of the squad at 20, Tommy Janssen from Wimbledon. At 18, he was the youngest world finalist ever. And the number eight man, the very tall figure, the lanky figure of Bent Larsen from Sheffield Tigers. And so now we move across to the English Lions, desperate to try to follow their soccer counterparts to World Cup glory. Len Silver, the team manager, who has really inspired this young England side. Ray Wilson, the number one in skipper, the inspiration of the side, the British champion, so much depends on him this evening. Number two, his partner from Swindon Robbins, Martin Ashby. At number three, we have from the Halifax Dukes, Eric Bucock, a world finalist, one of the senior statesmen of the squad. At number four, the whiz kid of the side, Peter Collins. We saw his fantastic race at Sheffield when we saw the England-Sweden qualifying match when he won it on the last race. This is John Louis, fantastic support. John Louis from Ipswich, Tiger Louis, one of the real key men of the England squad. At number six from Kings Lynn, Malcolm Simmons. His first big Wembley occasion. And at number seven, the blonde bombshell, also from Kings Lynn, Terry Betts, on his first big major Wembley occasion. So, an inexperienced, comparatively inexperienced English squad. The Swedes have all ridden here. They all know the Wembley track. They love it here. And we have, in this vital first race in the final of the Internations Tournament at Wembley Stadium. Coming into picture there in the darker coloured helmet for England, Martin Ashby. Martin Ashby for Swindon and England. And his partner there, Ray Wilson, on the inside grid one is the inside grid two next to him. Then we have three, and on the far right side, that's grid four. So we have Wilson there, the familiar digging foot of Wilson, just nervously trying to find some dirt, some grip. This is his usual little routine on the starting group. We have Wilson in one. We have Ashby in three. We will be having Hasse Holmquist, the late comer in this Swedish squad, replacing the injured Bent Janssen in the striped helmet, just coming in to grid two. And on the far right side, we have Krista Lofqvist, the little contortionist fireball from Pool Pirates, in his favourite outside grid here at Wembley. Last September, we saw him really roaring away from the outside grid. All important here, England versus Sweden. Heat one, Wilson, Holmquist, Ashby, Lofqvist. Here they go. Lots of nerves. Still pushing, pushing and pushing about, and again, Lofkus made a good one, it's Soden Wilson on the inside, Wilson's come through on the inside, the two sweets are tucked in behind him, and Ashby's been left, but it's Ray Wilson for England by that first corner in front. Wilson, then Lofkus, then Holmquist, Ashby coming, charging under Holmquist, flicks him out of the way there in no mean style at all, so it's England now in first and third. Wilson, Lofkus buzzing around Wilson's back, but Ray Wilson in authoritative position there, and Ashby came through on that bottom corner. Still Lofquist and Wilson, Lofquist trying very hard. Beautiful picture there as they're coming sideways through the pit corner. 
but it's Wilson for England, then Lofquist, in third place Ashby, and the battle really here looks like being all up in front because Lofquist is really having a dabble at Ray Wilson, he's just waiting for him to try and make a mistake, I don't think he's going to, Wilson looking in terrific command, the young skipper from Leicester, he's been an inspiration right through this tournament, and it looks like he's going to get England off to a brilliant start here at Wembley, Lofquist trying to the outside line there, finding no joy at all, Wilson stretched a bit of a lead on him now, they're on the last lap, round the last corner, Wilson is going to win heat one for England, Wilson over the line, first for England, second Lofquist, third Ashby, that is a 4-2 points heat win for England, so England goes straight into the lead, 4-2 after heat one. Heat three, and there we have, coming out for England, the hero of the hour, 19-year-old Peter Collins, one of the outstanding young prospects in the world from Bellevue, Manchester, a former grass track champion. He won this corresponding fixture in the international tournament league proper when he beat Anders Michinek on the last corner. The score now is England 8 after two races. England 8, Sweden 4. A four-point lead, an unexpected early lead for England. And in this one, we have on the inside for England, John Louis from Ipswich in the first grid, inside grid. Next to him, we have Ben Pearson from Cradley in Sweden. Then we have Peter Collins from Bellevue, Manchester. On the far right side, Soren Stoughton also from Bellevue, Manchester. side by side in second and third place. Pearson from Sweden. Pearson for Sweden in front. Building up a fantastic lead. Pearson, then Louis, then Collins. Justin trying to get back up on turn. But it's Pearson for Sweden. Pearson from the start. Then Louis. Then Collins. And at the back, we have Sostin. So, at the moment, the points are divided in this one. Remember, it's three for a win, two for a second, one for a third. So, at the moment, with a Swede leading and two Englishmen in second and third places, it means this heat is divided three points each. They're on the last lap now, and Danny Pearson from Cloudley Heath and from Sweden has looked the total master in this one right from the start. He knows Empire Stadium very well indeed after his second place here. Over the line he goes, second place in the world final last year. He hasn't forgotten the quickest way around. Bert Persson from Sweden, a very, very easy winner of Heat 3. The points divided, three to each team, and there we have in the white helmet, Bernie Persson, unpopular, some feel, after his second place last year when he ran into my colleague commentator Barry Briggs. But there is Bernie Persson in no trouble at all in that one. Heat 4 coming up. And in this one, England bring in for the first time with the score standing at 11 to England. Four points to 11 England, Sweden 7. And we have coming in to this one for the first time this evening the respective number threes of each side. Eric Bukop there on the inside of your picture there in the red helmet. There. Right on the far inside, just practicing the start, we have the Crown Prince of Swedish Speedway, one of their really outstanding riders and favourites for this year's World Championship final, Anders Michinek. So we have Michinek on the inside, next to him Eric Bukop, Tommy Jansen, and on the outside where we saw him make a very good start in Heat 2, we have Malcolm Simmons. Heat 4. Sweden. The Swedes show in front of that one. Mitchell and Jansen flew away then. And Simmons is trying the wide outside. Eric Bukov is left again. Eric Bukov is left on the inside. It's Simmons now going after the Swedes for England. Mitchell in command in front. Then Jansen. Markham Simmons there in third place, trying hard to get back up on terms. But the Swedes really made a beautifully professional game. Eric Bukov in terrible trouble at the back. And it's Sweden in front. And it's Mitchell. Then Jansen. Simmons hasn't finished trying. Michinek has stretched into a very, very convincing lead. Markham Simmons now trying the outside. He's trying to get under him. He's trying to get under Jansen. He's going to go round him here, I think. He's got a lot of drive on there. Shoulder to shoulder down that one. Jansen pulls him out, pushes him wide. There's Michinek in front. Simmons still trying the wide outside. There's not much in it between the two. And then Simmons has gone by. Simmons has gone by on the outside. He locks back and chops him up. 
it's on a very, very fine professional piece of riding from Markham Simmons. He tried for two laps on the inside. He couldn't find a hole, so he switched to the outside and he's got by him. And that is very healthy indeed as they go over the line. Mitchell first, then Simmons, then Jansen. That keeps England in front. A 4-2 for the Swedes. They bring the scores back to within two points of England. There's the winner, Anders Michinek made a fantastic flying start to the inside grid and never looked in danger. Malcolm Simmons here just pulling his face fast down, kept battling for England, battling for England, came up, got a vital second place. That could be important later on. But there's the winner, Anders Michinek, a 4-2 heat win for Sweden. Heat five, and the Swedes narrowing the gap. Just two points in it now. England 13, Sweden 11 after four races. And heat five, we have there on the inside of your picture, Peter Collins from England and Bellevue. Next to him, we have Hasse Holmquist in the striped helmet from Oxford and Sweden. In the third grid, John Tiger Louis from Ipswich. And on the far right side, Krista Lofquist from Poole and Sweden. So that's the lineup. Heat five, Collins, Holmquist, Louis, Lofquist. Just two points in it. And let's see if Lofquist can really make another jet propelled start out of the number four grid. He's done it before. Louis there trying a little bit of kidology, a bit of war of nerves going on. Who's going to get in first? Who's going to settle first? Here we go. Heat five. Just two points. Away. And away they go. And Collins got a terrific start on the inside there. Louis reared a little bit. Collins for England on the inside. The Swedes in second and third places. Louis made a dreadful start. Not a very good first corner, but he's chasing hard after the Swedes. Peter Collins on the inside there going very, very beautifully indeed. Peter Collins still hopping and pumping about. But what an incredible start that was because Collins made a terrific start and Louis made a very bad start. So it's Collins in front. We have Lofkris chasing hard after him for Sweden. We have Holmquist in third place and Louis right on the back. And here comes Lofkris for the sweep. Collins contains him. Collins seems to know where he is. Collins seems to be very much in command of the situation at the moment. Only 19 from Bellevue, Manchester. One of the really great discoveries in English speedway. Lofkris trying hard on the inside to get under him. But Collins knows all about that, shuts the door, no room there, Krista, try somewhere else, son. Peter Collins now on his last lap, holding back Krista Loftus, a big gap then between Holmquist and Louis right at the back, very unexpectedly. Here we go, into the, pit, the bottom corner, the pit corner here at Wembley. Loftus drifting, drifting hard on the inside, he's not going to catch him. Over the line, a very fine win for Peter Collins, then Loftus, then Holmquist. But a very interesting start, it all really happened at the start of that one. I'll be interested to hear what Barry Briggs says about the start of Heat 5. Young Peter Collins on number one here. The first race he was a little bit erratic and he missed the start. But this one here, the green light is right on the outside of the picture. And I got the feeling that Collins just took a chance on that green light. As soon as the green light flashed, he moved off. And look at him pulling out there. He moved just that fraction of a second. You've only got to drop the, the clutch that little bit before the others. And as you can see, he's got a clear two to three two or three length lead going into the corner and he what a great prospect this boy is if he's not world's championship material i'll go he and he, this race he kept right on the inside whereas the first race he was all over the track but that was only his first race here and he just went on to win a marvelous race keeping out that good rider crystal Loftus. The score now, 16-14 to England. It's all boiling up. And we'll be back to this very interesting and fascinating Internations Tournament final between England and Sweden in just two minutes. Welcome back to Empire State in Wembley. And the state of the parties at the moment, the score, England 16, Sweden 14. Only two points in it after five interesting races in the Internations Tournament final. In this one we have there on the far right side, the familiar figure digging up the track of Ray Wilson of Leicester in England. Wilson in the outside grid. Next to him, next to him, it looks like a change from Sweden. It looks very much like a change from Sweden, but it should be Oli Nygren in the yellow helmet. Next to him, we have Martin Ashby, and on the inside, we have Michinek. No, it, 
It is, in fact, Nygren. There is no change from Sweden. We have Michnik on the inside, then Ashby, then Nygren on the outside, Ray Wilson. And away they go. Michnik's made another two yet for a failed start. And Nygren trying desperately hard to get in between the two Englishmen. Wilson in a bit of trouble there. And here comes Martin Ashby through in the third place. So it's Michnik in front for Sweden. Wilson going after him. Ashby's come belting through into third place. So the Swedes lead again the shape of Anders Michnik sliding into this bottom corner. Wilson chasing hard. Wilson chasing hard in third place, Ashby, right at the back, Nygren, a little bit out of his depth tonight. So Michnik leads for Sweden. In second place, Ray Wilson. In third place, Martin Ashby. And what a fantastic piece of starting that was again from Michnik. His real starting, his, his reflexes, his reactions, his build-up to the first corner really are something out of this world. Anders Michnik now is stretching his limbs, flexing his muscles, building up a big lead. He's on his last lap. Wilson seems to have given up the ghost for England in second place, but still the scores will be divided in this race, and England will hang on to this narrow two-point lead. Michnik leads for Sweden by a mile. Michnik absolutely in command. There in Wilson. There goes Anders Michnik. Is this the Sweden going to win the World title this year? Who knows? He looks pretty good at Wembley tonight. So, Michinek first for Sweden, then Wilson for England. In third place, Ashby, three points to each side, points divided, still only two points in it. Anders Michinek, very calm, unruffled, takes his goggles off, no dirt at all. You don't get dirt when you're in front. And Anders Michinek was in front from start to finish. And so, heat seven. With England still just two points, their nose is in front, two points in front. England in this one have Malcolm Simmons there, who has won a race and finished a very fine second in another. Malcolm Simmons on the inside there in the blue helmet. Next to him, we have in the yellow helmet for Sweden, the striped yellow and black helmet, Soren Justin. Then we have Eric Bukok, a very disappointing run in his first one. Last in his first race, Eric Bukok in the third grid. And on the outside, we have Bernie Pearson, who made a very fine start to his first ride. So it's Simmons, Stoston, Bukok, and on the outside, Pearson. Heat seven, and it's Pearson that's made the jump. Pearson from the outside. Stoston and Simmons locked together in second place. Malcolm Simmons, I think, is going to shut the door on Stoston around the outside. He has Eric Bukok's been left again at the start. So it's Pearson for Sweden, then Simmons. Then it's Justin, and at the back, Eric Bukok back when we get that on terms. Two very, very bad starts from Bukok, and he's struggling. But the Swedes are now looking a bit livelier. The Swedes in front through Bernie Pearson. Pearson going through your picture now in front. Next to him, Simmons. Then the little figure of Sorens Justin going sideways on the dust, flying on the pit corner, and Eric Bukok tailed off at the back. Pearson for Sweden. Then Simmons. Then Stoston. At the moment, the scores in this race will be in a 4-2 for Sweden, which will bring the scores back level almost directly on the halfway stage of this match. So England, having built up quite a nice early lead, have now lost it, providing the positions don't change in this one. So it's Bernie Pearson from Sweden in front, again from start to finish. He was second in the world final here last year. He certainly knows his way around Empire Stadium, Wembley. He's been in no trouble at all. There he goes in the white helmet, trying to look over his shoulder. There's nobody there. But though Malcolm Simmons, to his credit, didn't stop trying. Pearson for Sweden first. Then Simmons in third place, Justin. A 4-2 heat win advantage for the Swedes, who now pull back level in the final of the international tournament. 4-2 for Sweden, a win for Pearson. We're back on all square. So there we are after seven races exactly at the halfway stage of this international tournament final from Wembley. The scores level at 21 all, 21 to each team. So it's building up again. This is almost a replica of the fixture we saw on ITV from Sheffield in the tournament qualifying league table when it was touch and go all the way along the line until the very last corner of the last lap. Are we going to see history repeat itself? It certainly could be that way. So there we have the blonde curls of Terry Betts of England poking out under his crash helmet there. Terry, his second outing of the evening, a very, very strong, reliable sort of man to have in reserve. Terry Betts from Kingsland. On the outside of the picture, just with his arms folded there, we have Tommy Jansen from the young man from Wimbledon Dons, a very big favourite down there with the girls at Play Lane, a bit of a teeny bopper idol. Tommy Jansen. Here we go again then. Terry Betts coming out. Terry will go into the outside with the very fast outside tonight. We've seen lots of winners coming flying out from the outside. Terry Betts on the outside. Next to him, we'll have Hassi Holmquist. Then in the grid number two, we'll have Martin Ashby. On the inside, we have Tommy Jansen. Tonight, it's looked as though the grids, with all the importance at the start, are number one and number four. Let's have a look now with the scores level on Heat 8 to see what's going to happen in this one. Watch grids one and four. They seem to be the fastest, but in Speedway, anything can happen. 
So it's Jansen and Betts on the lanes to watch. But then again, Ashby and Holmquist could do the impossible. Here we go, and indeed it was Holmquist out of three that made the jump. Betts got a good one from the outside. Betts trying very, very hard around the outside, giving it all screwed up, and he lost a bit of ground there. Terry Betts, Terry Betts trying on the outside, but Holmquist made the jump from number three. Here goes Terry again. this young long bombshell from King's Lynn. He doesn't really know much about the great finesse of the business, but he does keep it screwed on. Terry Betts for England. The swings tucked neatly and committed into second and third place. Holmquist in second place. Then Jansen. Martin Ashby is still fighting at the back. We can't seem to get any ground at all on this third place sweep. But Terry Betts is in front, and the Union Jack is waving gaily for England. They're on the last lap. On the last lap, Terry Betts goes over the line there in front of Port Britain, a very, very fine piece of determined riding on the first couple of laps from Terry, who really got round the outside of Holmquist, who gated first. Terry Betts, number seven on his back, a very vital and beautifully timed heat win for the Lions. And here's Hassey Holmquist on the inside of the track with a wide helmet and Terry Betts right on the outside of him. A very unusual manoeuvre for Wembley. It's better to go up the inside, but here's Best. Betts going right round the outside of Holmquist. Holmquist hugging the line as Betts now pulling the bike back to get a straight drive down the straight. It looks as though he might just make it, but Holmquist has straightened up and Holmquist once again just gets his nose ahead, but Betts gets a great deal of traction. You can see how far Betts is sitting on the back of the machine. He's right on the back mudguard. He's got in front of Holmquist now and he's pulled back down to the inside and he's got the control of the race and goes on to win it with Converse second. And so Heat 9 with the scores still level at 24 points to each side. Heat 9, an important one this one because we have John Louis for England on the inside. Next to him we have unbeaten so far Anders Michnek from Sweden. In grid 3, just coming into the outside of your frame there, we have Peter Collins from Bellevue, a tiger all night. And the Swedish team manager, Christer uh, Bergström, pulls an important reserve change here. He's dropped the veteran of the squad, Oli Nygren, who's seen a little bit out of depth there, and brought in young Tommy Jansen in the yellow and black helmet, striped helmet on the outside. So the Swedes really throwing down the gauntlet now. The Swedes really fancy they can pull it away here. Michnek has been really so much in command tonight. Can this young English pair contain this fine Swedish rider? Here we go, heat nine. Away they go, and Collins got a terrific start in three. Collins got a start in three. Louis got a terrible knock from Michnek as he went into the corner, but it's Peter Collins for England in front of Michnek. Louis got a terrific knock on the first corner, and it's Collins for England. Louis tried the wide open spaces on the outside to try and find some traction, can find none, and it's Michinek for Sweden going after Collins. Peter Collins, the 19-year-old from Bellevue, Manchester, out in front, hopping, bumping, ducking and diving about in front there, but still keeping an awful lot of motor on and holding back Anders Michinek. Collins for England, then Michinek, then Janssen, John Louis trying hard to get back on terms, but it's the leading pair here where all the fun and excitement is because Michinek's making a big effort. Michinek's making a big effort to get up on the inside. Collins sees the other read his mind, chops back, leaves him no room. Space in the keeps in control. And here comes Michinek again. Michinek trying to dive through, trying to dive through on the inside. Collins has held him, Collins has held him again on this last lap now. And it's on the last corner, and here comes Michinek again to try and dive through on the inside. He misses the corner just slightly, and Collins is going to beat him. Collins is going to beat the mighty Swede over the line. The crowd are raising, are rising in suit of this young Manchester boy. A very fine piece of riding from Peter Collins. This very large crowd here at Wembley really rising to him. You can see just how many people, they loved that race because Peter Collins hopped out in front of Michinek, kept him at the back, showed him a back wheel beautifully, right the way around four laps. So England stay level with the Swedes thanks to this man here, Peter Collins, the three points all, thanks to that fine win by Peter Collins.
Just four races to go, and that's the state of the parties. England 27, Sweden 27. It can go either way still. And now the English team manager, Len Silver, is playing what he hopes will be his trump card because he's bringing Terry Betts, his reserve, who won a race, his last race, round the outside. Terry Betts comes in in place of Martin Ashby in the blue helmet there in grid number two, but on the inside, a formidable opponent, Bernie Persson, unbeaten for Sweden so far in the white helmet. Bernie Persson from Sweden on the inside, then Betts. Next to him, we have Soren Stjosten on the outside, England skipper Ray Wilson still poking about, nosing about, trying to find just a little bit of extra traction on the outside there. So a very important heat, 10. And away they go, and Betts looked at me, so he got the jump, Betts got the jump, Persson's coming under him very hard, but it's Betts in front, then Persson, Wilson trying the outside, but Stjosten coming shot through on the inside and Terry Betts for England in front then Pearson Wilson in terrible trouble there when he tried to hook back so it's again England in front then the two Swedes and Wilson surprisingly at the back but I don't think he's stopped fighting yet Terry Betts with number seven on his back in front Pearson going after him well we saw Anders Mitchell the other mighty sweep beaten in the last race and now Terry Betts has got time to look back to see where Bernie Pearson is He's about five lengths behind him, so it's Terry Betts, the reserve that manager Silver brought in, coming up with the goodies, and Wilson is trying very, very hard to get back onto Sosten's back wheel. He hasn't finished fighting by any means, and England badly need this third place if Wilson can get up. Terry Betts in front, I don't think Pearson's going to catch him on the last lap now. Terry Betts in front for England. Wilson trying the hard outside line, can't do it, but it's Betts in front. Betts flicking his goggles up. Betts in front for England, and then Pearson. And Wilson then despairingly trying to come back on turn for Stoffel. He's not going to make it to open the line. The scores are going to stay level. Terry Betts, the trump card that paid off for England. A win for Terry. In second place, Ben Pearson. In third place, his partner from Sweden, Soren Stoffel. The points are still level. Still anything can happen. Terry Betts really came up with the goods then for England. But it's really very tight and building up to another fantastic climax. Terry Betts from Kings Lynn, his second race on the trot. The big effort. England looks to Terry at the moment, and they look in this one, heat 11, with just three races remaining to Kings Lynn. This really is Kings Lynn versus Sweden, because we have on the inside Malcolm Simmons, the England reserve tonight, and of course a member of the Kings Lynn stars up there in Saddlebow Road, and he sang him. Malcolm on the inside, looking around for his partner, Terry Betts, who's going to go into the third grid there. Terry just coming in, the last one in line there. But we have for Sweden. Next to him, next on the inside, we have Krista Lofquist. And on the far right side, I beg your pardon, we have Hassi Holmquist. And on the far right side, we have Lofquist. So it's Simmons, Holmquist, Betts, Lofquist. The two Chris, the commentator's nightmare. Heat 11. And away they go, and Betts has made another terrific start. And so is Simmons comes through on the inside. But Lofquist, Lofquist for Sweden, going very, very wide indeed. But it's England in front. England in front with Betts showing in front with another fantastic start. Betts then Lofquist. through Betts, then Lofquist, then Simmons, and it's Holmquist held up at the back, and they're almost in line of rest there, and Lofquist making a very, very big effort to get up the inside of Terry Betts, Terry drifting a little bit dangerously there, Terry in, in front for England, Lofquist again comes right up, Terry chopped back on him, they're having a really, really big dice, a really big dice here, Terry leaves a lot of rib on the inside, but he seems to have shut the door there satisfactorily, Terry Betts for England and Kings Lane. In front, Lofkis now is trying to find some grip round the outside. Time to look back, Lofkis Simmons is still in contention. They're on the last lap now, and Terry again looks like pulling it really out of the fire for England. Here comes Lofkis again round the boys. Terry's drifted him out there. He seemed to know where he was going. He's looking for him. He knows that effort's going to come on this corner. Just keep it nice and steady, Terry. He's trying to get under you on the inside. He's going to do it, I think. Terry goes over the first. What was that one? My goodness me, that was close. Lofkis made a colossal effort. It had to happen. Terry seemed to be looking What's the referee going to say? The drama now really building up here at Wembley. Well, there he is, the ACU referee, Arthur Humphrey, and he's an Englishman, has declared that Lofquist's effort just got him home. The crowd didn't like it, but he's the man with the whistle. Krista Lofquist has kept Sweden level with England there with a really fantastic last bend effort. 33 all, two to go, still levels your devils. Anything can happen, but the Swedes really should thank their lucky stars for Krista Lofquist in that one.
The plundering and looting should start now. On the inside, we have Anders Michinek from Sweden. Next to him, England skipper Ray Wilson. Then we have Bernie Pearson from Sweden. On the outside, Collins. The top Swedish pair against this pair of young Englishmen and the scores level. You could not ask for more drama. This one is really going to be a vital one because the Swedes can really put themselves in, in an unattainable position if they get a first and second here. So much depends on the English pairing here. And away they go, and Collins has got a terrific start on the outside. But Michinek has really come snaking out of the inside grid. And it's Michinek in front, and the English pair have tucked in behind him. Michinek in front, then Collins, then Wilson. Pearson untypically at the back. They're all in a very, very big queue up there. Fantastic start from the inside. Michinek for Sweden, then Collins, then Wilson, then Pearson surprisingly at the back and seeming losing ground, seeming to be losing ground. So the scores will still stay level, and it will all be on the last one if they keep in these positions. And the crowd really now beginning to start to buzz and chat. Michinek first, the English pair. Pearson, a bit of a surprise here because Bernie Pearson just has not been competitive. Anders Michinek, though, has been supremely competitive right from the start. He flew out there. Collins made a good start on the outside, but Michinek just kept everything going on the inside. Round the first corner first, and at Wembley, that's all important. At this level of world speedway, they don't make mistakes, and if you get that flying start, it makes an awful lot of difference. So there goes Anders Michinek over the line. A win for Sweden, but the English pairing, thankfully, if you're an Englishman, tucked into second and third positions. Again, a drawn race. Again, the scores are level. Again, it's all on the last race. Could you ask for more? Michinek has done his bit for Sweden. The English pairing have done their bit. Now it's all on the vital, fateful Heat 30. You can almost hear a pin drop in Wembley now, except for the bikes, the roaring of the bikes, the crowd have silenced. It's all on this one, Heat 13, the gate, the start is going to be so vital. Let's watch Heat 13, Simmons on the inside, then Loftus, then Betson on the far outside, Sorens Johnson. The last race of the tournament final, and away to go, and the Swedes seem to have got it. The Swedes, it's Loftus who's made the start, Johnson trying a very, very big outside drive. Betson second place, Simmons here on the inside, I think. Yes, the English pair have got through, but it's Loftus in front. happens here, the English pairing pumping and biting each other there, trying to hold back, I think they're going to let, let Loftus go, they're letting Loftus go, they're going to try and hold out Stoston, Loftus in front, Stoston now coming up, making a big effort after this deck, that pink slip pair. The English pair have let the winner go, they've let Loftus go on, they're concentrating on holding out Stoston, this match will end in a draw and then both team managers will have to nominate top rider for a sudden death match race. They're on the last lap now. They're on the last lap. The Kings Lynn pairing still holding back. Shostin. Shostin coming up for an effort now. He's not that far behind. They certainly can't afford to luck about. Come on, lads. Holding back. Lost Crystal Barn in front. The Kings Lynn pairing with all the understanding they've built up. Lost Crystal over the line. He's delighted. The English pairing second and third. That means the tournament final has ended in a draw, 39 points all. Rothquist's great effort before when he beat Betts has done the trick for Sweden. And that means really now we have the storybook end to the international tournament because both team managers must now nominate one rider for a match race to decide the tournament. Krista Lothquist the winner and it's all still boiling up. The crowd buzzing with expectancy. Never before has an international series ended so dramatically. A match race between two riders, the whole fate of the tournament now only 70 seconds away. They've been riding for 19 days, it's been the toughest tournament World Speedway has ever known, and now it all rests on just two men. One Swede, one Englishman, who's it going to be? I wonder, Barry, who would you choose? I think it's a very, very difficult decision. I think that Betts and Simmons were on top form tonight. Wilson seems fast enough when he gets out of the start, but I personally would take a little bit of a chance on young Collins. He's already put it across Michinek once. If he gated him, I think he's fast enough to hold Michinek there, and I think that he would be my choice, a very unusual choice, but I am glad I'm not Leighton Silver. It's Michinek. Michinek for Sweden, and it's Collins for England. Barry, how do you see this one working out? 
Well, obviously the start's going to be very, very important, but Mitch has got everything for him just going to the first corner. But if Collins breaks with him, I, I would like to see uh, Collins have the big burn around the outside. There seems to be a little bit of grip around the outside. If Michinick makes a start, he's going to hold down on the inside, and I think Collins may waste his time up the inside, but if Michinick starts, I'd like to see Collins have a burn around the outside. Of him. Well, there we have the young man whom all England looks to at this moment in time, particularly if you're a Speedway fan. Peter Collins, only 19, from Bellevue, Manchester. The man that team manager Len Silver there on the left of your frame has selected to carry England's chances of winning the Internations Tournament final. His opponent, Anders Michinek, and Collins has won the toss for gate position, for gate positions. Now, what's he going to take? Really? Len Silver, obviously, starting his chat, his ins inspirational chat. Barry, what are we Len telling Peter to do at this moment? I would think they're deciding what gate position they'll take, Dave. They're not quite, sh they're not quite sure what, what to do, but I... Personally, I think I'd start on the inside of Michinek on this one. Well, there we have Anders Michinek from Sweden. By any form book, he must be the man to win this one. But Collins has beaten him in the match. We saw him a fortnight ago on ITV winning the match for England when England met Sweden at Sheffield in the tournament league table. On the last bend of the last lap, he beat Michinek. Perhaps this is some psychology from manager Len Silver, we don't know. We just certainly know this is going to be 70 seconds of fantastic speedway racing with so much depending on this start. Collins on the inside, only 19 in his first big season, his first big Wembley occasion. Michinek in the white helmet. Let's watch the start. And away they go, and it's Collins who's made the start. Collins has made the jump, and Michinek tried very hard to come out of it. He's shut the door on him. And it's Collins in front for the Lions. Collins in front. He came under him very, very hard indeed. And he's certainly got a knock from him. The race goes on. The match race goes on with only one starter. And the crowd do not like that one little bit. The crowd do not like that one little bit. What is happening? The race has been stopped. The race has been stopped, has it? Absolute drama. Absolute drama. Absolute track chaos at the moment. Michinette keeps going. Wilson... The England skipper, the flags are out, there's the exclusion flag, it looks to me, that looked to me like the exclusion flag, there's absolute panic in the pitch, nobody knows what's happened. Barry, how did you see that one? Now this is the start of where the trouble started, Michinek is up the inside, he, he got, dives underneath Collins coming into the corner, Collins is on the outside, Michinek hasn't had, tried to turn at all, he's got underneath Collins, he's made a very late turn, he's clipped the front of Collins' machine, and he's, he's moved out into the middle of the track, and I would say, yes, Andrews, you're, you're the fault there, my boy. And, Barry, you're dead right. The ACU referee, Arthur Humphreys, has disqualified the rider in white for unfair riding, Anders Michinek, and now the tantrums are going to start in the pits. Now we can see the Swedish drama. The Swedish drama there, I can see their team manager, one of their officials there. That looks like Charles Ringbone right at the back end of, the, of your frame there. You can see his head nodding away. Mr Speedway in Sweden, obviously very, very unhappy about that decision. What a tragedy, what a way to end a fantastic tournament. But I'm sure that is what's going to happen. I'm sure that England are going to win this on default. There's Michinek, and Michinek says, I just kept going, he's trying to explain himself. But the referee, the referee has excluded him, Anders, you went over the top, son. And that means that England have won the international tournament sponsored by the Daily Mirror. And really and truly, Barry, Barry, he really had to have a go. That's a bit unlucky and a tragic end to such a fine tournament. tournament. Here they come, the winning side in the Daily Mirror international tournament. And with the drama, the sensation, the spectacle, we say goodnight to you from Wembley Stadium.